person, label it, shreds, stick it in your blue box, and it'll go into the truck just like that. What happens at the MRF is they clog up the machinery, and in order to get this stuff untangled, they have to shut down the whole line, which means that company is losing money. <coughs> and then things break, and it really drives up the maintenance costs at this you know, fancy, expensive facility. And so that is another thing that drives up municipal waste management costs. It's really important to keep that plastic and any other stringy things out of your blue box, please. Oh, and this was my big um, learning recently. When you think about those conveyor belts, this is a new piece of information to people. Think physically about what happens in the MRF as things are moving along. Small things fall off and get lost. It hits the floor, it ends up in the landfill. So, keep a little metal can by your recycling bin. This is for all you really avid people who want to do the best job. Little lid, all those um, you know, metal lids off your wine bottle or your beer can. Stick them in your little can, crimp the can closed, stack it inside the other cans and they all stay together and your metal lid ends up in the metal recycling instead of on the floor of the sorting facility. Exactly, exactly. So here's the other tip about lids. If the container and the lid are made of the same material, squash the air out of the container, screw the lid back on, chuck it in your yellow bin. It makes the container smaller, you will fit more in your recycling bin, and if you live on a county road and there's a big wind or a big truck going by, that vinegar bottle is less likely to be airborne and end up in the ditch. So we really encourage you to crush your containers, stick the lid back on if it's plastic and plastic, and then put it in your bin. So you will find these great little pictures in the Drummond North Helmsley Waste Matters brochure. This is what goes in our container stream in CNE and Smith Falls. It's very yellow bin too, aren't you? Okay, we're all yellow bins with containers. Plastic, glass, metal, and the gable tops and tetra packs. On um, the fiber um, one, we've got our shredded paper in the cardboard box, box board, Kleenex, those sorts of things. Um, mixed paper, cardboard, that's your fiber stream. And to remember those things that go in the garbage. If it's not recyclable, that's where it belongs. We don't want people just hoping for the best and th throwing it in the bin, saying, well, I guess we'll figure it out at the other end. It, if you're not sure, put it in the garbage. Or phone your happy little municipal office and they will let you know where it belongs. And I think that's about it. Yes, that's good, though. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great time management. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Um, really important reminders of how to uh, recycle properly because uh, uh, the residue rate at a material recovery facility can really uh, uh, kind of defeat the purpose of recycling if it doesn't end up in the end market. So, uh, great reminder. Thank you very much for that. Um, one of the things um, Kathy mentioned, the, uh, the the market for recyclables have kind of collapsed in some areas, and, and and a lot of that has to do with the price of fuel. Um, you know, when I started in this industry 30 years ago, a barrel of oil was worth 42 dollars. 30 years later, it's worth 62. It's relatively cheap. So as long as oil is cheap manufacturers can make plastic, which is a petroleum product, from virgin sources. They don't need to recycle it, therefore the value goes down. That's what we're experiencing right now, and in the municipality I live in, uh, in Rito Lakes, and we have a few representatives here tonight, uh, you know, they had to make a difficult decision to stop collecting certain things because there simply isn't a market for it. And, and I think that reinforces why the system is broken. That should not be a property taxpayer responsibility. Mm -hmm. It should be a group of the tax of the product that's responsible for that. We're not in the markets. We're, we shouldn't be in the commodity markets, but we are. On your behalf, we're in the commodity markets. 
and uh, they fluctuate. And so sometimes it's good, sometimes not, not so good. Right now we're in a bit of a trough, and uh, that'll eventually change. But the reality is you can buy fuel for a buck six a liter, but that's relatively cheap because um, uh, a barrel of oil is cheap. So anyway, it's all part of the bigger economy, and it explains why the, uh, the lesser valuable plastics like the film plastics and bags and, and uh, margarine containers, they're, they're just not very valuable. And, uh, so that's a little insight into that. So I'll stop uh, talking about worldwide commodities and hand it over to Vanessa. Vanessa is, uh, uh, she does everything at the town of Falls <laughs> and does it very well. So uh, uh, Vanessa's uh, uh, an engineering technologist and she does uh, capital projects for us. Uh, she also handles the waste management portfolio. So she's going to talk about uh, waste audits, right? Right. We're dialing down. We're dialing down. And, and before you can set about fixing what you're doing, you need to know what you're dealing with. So Vanessa's going to tell us all about that. So hello, everybody. Hi. First of all, I'd like you to uh, write down our, on Facebook, our mm -hmm. Journey to Sustainable Living website. Uh, Facebook page. You can get an awful lot of information from this avenue. We have lots of links and uh, information for you to assist you in your journey to sustainability. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, I'm dialing down home audit, reducing waste, uh, growing your own food, and backyard composting. So, if you want to go right to the picture, thanks. So basically, a home audit is you would get a space available, separate, give yourself some containers uh, for, um, for fibers and for containers, a garbage and a, an organic box, and then just uh, divide your waste and, and see what you have there and see what you have in excess of. Um, so the categories basically are, are organic, fiber, container, textile, because there's places to be able to take your textiles as well. And uh, take a look at what you have in each pile and, and assess your habit. Uh, can you change them? Um, here in Smith Falls, um, our website has a lot of extra additional information. We do have uh, information on what actually goes in your yellow box, what goes in your blue box. We have uh, hazardous waste. Uh, we work with seven other municipalities to, to take your, your contaminants or your hard to recycle materials, and that's in Carlton Place. If we were to do one ourselves, it would be like $60,000 for one day. It's, it's insane. So as a group, we come together and, and we have a place from the May long weekend till September, the long weekend, open uh, Saturday mornings, 8 to 12. And our slogan this year that we worked with was, uh, on your way. So like when you go and go shopping into Ottawa, zip into Patterson Road and drop off your hazardous waste material. Or talk to your neighbors before you go and, and find an ability to, uh, bring a group or a, a bulk amount of material to that, it's just to be able to utilize that facility. Um, also with our, with our town, we, we work with REAL. We have the electrical, electrical recycling program, so your TVs, your like all types of electronics, and that's, that's still available now, day to day, and REAL is open um, Wednesday to Saturday from 10 till 5. Yeah. So that there is an ability, and also on our website, we have a listing of what material is acceptable. And also, you can take a look on Real's website to find that information. So, the home audit. You take a look at what you've got. So, can you go to the analysis, please? Thanks. So, <laughs> reiterating what Kathy had said. Cleaning your recycling. It's important because on the line, if it's dirty, they just take it and they throw it away. So what was the point of you putting it into the pail in the first place? Um, are you throwing out old clothes and textiles? 
there's lots of organizations that uh, can either, if you're in, unable to go out and take things to to these places, um, there's a Reclaim Textiles there in the, the small mall at Broadview and Brockville Street, where you can take your, your clothes, or you can work with the Salvation Army, or like I say, if you're unable to, to get out, you can call CPS for a pickup. Um, organic. We do not have an, uh, an organic program here in St. Paul. We do not have a landfill. Um, it does, through our curbside audits, it does make up 30% of our waste. On a five-year trend, it's been very consistent. So what we offer in Swiss Falls is backyard composters. And then, uh, are you throwing out glass and plastic containers? Um, you can you can repurpose those. Or at the health food store, what happens if you want to fill a container? You can take your container and they'll pre-weigh it for you, and then you can fill it up. So there's really no excuse to grab extra packages because you do have things available to be able to access. A lot of our, um, the garden market, and is it in independent too? Will they uh, allow I you to? I have heard people say that they've been able to do um, the meat counter right. and independent, but you have to speak directly to the butcher there and the garden right. market will do it at the deli counter and they'll do mm -hmm. So if you pre-talk to them, you can't take your own containers and they can put your meat into that, those containers. So you're not taking away those plastic films. You can bring your own cotton bags, put your fruit into. They don't weigh anything, really, and they won't affect the price. Um, so just think about what you're throwing out and, uh, and what you're throwing out in excess and then just brainstorm other ways of being able to, rather than having that, piece of garbage, see if there's another way that you can attain that product. So, so the next step, so before you even get to go in throwing things into the garbage, we did a session, a workshop number two about meal planning. So do a stock, stock of what you have. So instead of, oh, this is on sale, so I'll buy 10 of them. So now you have now 20 in the cupboard. So maybe it's an opportunity to actually take a look at what you already have and use what you already have. So that's for, for containers and stuff. Even with meat, so it doesn't get freezer burned. Get some more planning done on that so that you will reduce the, the amount of, of waste that you generate. Um, as I said, when you purchase things, you can purchase it without having <coughs> um, Bulk shopping, uh, I'm, I'm promoting the health food <laughs> store, and I know there's several locations in, a, even at Independence, I think they have sections where you can go and only get what you want, so you're not letting things rot and have to throw things away. So just judging what you take. Um, shop locally, support those that are around it. Um, can you repair what before you throw out? Um, and do you really need to buy new? You can uh, save some money. You look around at your thrift stores. Maybe they already have something. Or, or there's the, um, through the Facebook, there's the, uh, uh, sa the, the saving or swap shop or, or buy and sell or marketplace. Maybe you could review those locations before you actually go out and buy brand new. Okay, so just to give you um, some basics to think about. These are 20 basic things that you can do to help reduce your waste. So number one, stop buying new stuff. Like I just said, you can look at other areas. Avoid plastic wrapping. Bring your own to the store. Um, like bring your own bag, put everything into. Um, avoid single-use plastic. Create your own packet to go with you when you go to a restaurant. You don't necessarily have to use the plastic fork from, from Burger King to get your french fry. You can have your own. Or you can bring your own straw. Your own water bottles. Um, 
getting you more extreme new teas so you don't have to get those all those packages um, reducing that uh, buy secondhand electronics look at the buy and sell um, uh, the thrift shop there's lots of varieties of different things retro's coming back <laughs> pretty cool and um, repair items uh, it's a lost art I'm hoping someday that we'll get some of the old generation that will come and help teach the younger generation how, how to fix some basic things so things just aren't just thrown away. Um, when you're cooking, you don't necessarily, you can, you can cook uh, two meals in one. That saves you some time, saves you some electricity. Um, or repurpose what you have for leftovers. Um, or freeze things. Um, and the other thing that I was talking about when you have your own packaging, you can only you can get what you want. So you're not over purchasing so you're saving yourself some money. Um, one of the other things I saw was a silicone baking sheet so you're not constantly using using other papers and and foil and other things. Um, yeah, same with trends. Do you really need it? Are you comfortable in what you have? And uh, Research local charities for studies that we need items. Um, we have a, a food table, I think, that provides um, uh, fresh vegetables in the summertime. You could you could purchase those. Um, also, repurposing, take something old and make it new. Um, go on a budget. That helps you too. <laughs> when you don't have to buy a large amount of things, and you can just again take what what you need um buy reduced <coughs> items they're still good um and then just make your plans for for your meals to use them more so than just leaving them in the fridge and last item possibly grow your own food novel idea <laughs> <laughs> um, um thoughts on reducing meat consumption becoming flexitarian this is a new word that i just learned so it's not vegan, but it's reducing, saying maybe two nights of the week, you don't have meat. That would help lower the carbon footprint of, of, of the methane. Um, it'll also lower your grocery bill. And there's some really neat videos online with um, cutting off like a, a celery, putting it in water, and actually it will regrow. So there's uh, some very neat things there that you can see what's happening. And the other things when you're when you're cleaning off your vegetables, you don't have to necessarily throw those fillings in such a way. You can make stock with that, or apple cores to make uh, applesauce. There's lots of ways to stretch things and to to reduce what you're throwing and in, throwing into the garbage. And so the next topic I want to talk about is growing your own food. So no matter where you live, there's ways that you can grow things. This is the new thing that's on the market. I have to show you. I have to go up and get one. Um, you can grow your own herbs on your, your counter, your kitchen counter, um, or, or other vegetables, or start your plants. It's just hydroponic, small and compact, and you can just actually snip off your, uh, your herbs and it will just keep regrowing. Re re um, the next, uh, so you could use that for apartment living, or even even if you're in a small place. Or um, next phase is echo gardens and other garden spaces. If you don't necessarily have a garden space of your own, if you live in an apartment or in a complex, real act actually has um, garden plots that you can rent. Um, so if you still, if you're in an apartment and you still want to have a garden, there is that ability to, to rent some space. And uh, if you have your own home, then you can actually do your own garden and, and grow things. And if you grow enough, you can share it with your neighbors. So you're helping, again, reduce that, uh, that footprint of, of getting things from the uh, grocery <coughs> store. Um, you want to go into the next one? Thanks. So large community garden. This is just thought. Is there a need? 
we're getting, uh, yes, we're short on retail or, sorry, um, apartment complexes and rental facilities with this fall and people are looking for places to, to live. And I know we're, we're getting more complexes and more densification on homes. So we don't have that ability to plant in, in your backyard. So can we create a community garden? You see this in other urban centers. And um, is there a need? And uh, our thoughts, or a couple of us have been thinking, um, the old Stanley Tool uh, property, uh, there's two acres or so there that they're not doing anything with. There, it's just green space. Or behind um, part of South Western Park Canada land. I don't know, it's just, are there spots around where you could find an acre and that you could have somebody that would take ownership of that and, and that actually would promote uh, healthy living and, and an opportunity to teach and grow. So that brings us to, we don't have the, um, the landfill that our other two neighbors do. So we do offer uh, composters. We sell them for uh, $40. And currently, after through my, we have to report every year to the government what we sell and, and what gets recycled anyway. Uh, over a, quite a few years, we've, we've sold over 1,300 composters around the town. It's, so it's, not, it's not something that's not new, but um, it is a viable way to manage that additional 30% that we find that's in the waste. So there's, there's two different ways here that we have our plastic ones. I don't know if you can see that, but also real cells, um, they're made out of pallets and uh, it's, it's a larger uh, composting unit that you could share with neighbors and such. But uh, you need to just contact real if they, they get an order of over five or something like that, then, then they will, will purchase those. They're, they're made for them. Um, and lastly, so a couple of things that are happening around town. The high school um, has an industrial dishwasher in their in their cooking portion, uh, their their cooking school that they have. What they're going to be starting to do is they're offering to wash glass jars so they'll be sterilized and uh, able to be reused and cleaned. And also, they'll be taking and taking old t-shirts and making them into bags for use. So what they've done is they've purchased five industrial sewing machines, and the kids are going to learn how to utilize those and, and make bags. Now, this isn't going to be starting till later in the spring, so this is a, a new initiative. It is going to be happening. So I don't want you calling the high school and saying, can I donate some t-shirts? Can I bring but my jar? <laughs> <laughs> or bring your jars until they, they make that announcement. But I just want to make you aware that people are thinking about what to do, how, how to reuse, and how to take those difficult products and, and do things with them or create bags and such. And um, so community initiative, we still have like Big Brothers, Big Sisters have a storefront on William Street. And they, they take a lot of, of used clothing and um, Salvation Army, they do clothing and furniture. Real is an amazing reused store that takes lots of lots of great used products and um, resells them. They, they also do thermostat milk bags for making rugs last go over good construction materials. You just need to check out their website to, uh, to find out what's available there. And um, <coughs> this is one that I just learned about today. Um, <coughs> London, Ontario has a pilot project called Happy Environmental Bags. And what they're doing is they're, they're, they're providing residents with uh, a, a recycled large garbage bag. but. They're putting it in like chip bags and, and um, those one single use plastic. And they're using those and then they have three or four people around, manufacturers around that actually take that material and make it into something, into uh, composite lumbers and, and chairs and, 
and uh, people are responding very well to it and it's managing those those products that we just have no way to recycle within our programs today and they are going out to waste so trying to find diversions so the industry is also starting to respond to a single plastic crisis so if you're interested in what people are doing or what's happening around Canada you can hit canadianchemistry.ca or Canadian Plastic uh, Association and uh, they'll show you what they're the plastic industry is responding to the <coughs> the media that that's been brutal lately and well for quite a while but now they're actually taking action which is which is pretty awesome. So thank you very much. Thank you so much Vanessa. Yeah. Um, that gets us all thinking about things we can do, and uh, it's none of this is difficult. You just need to give us some thought. And I think, um, you know, millennials are going to challenge us to, to act and, and, and conduct ourselves differently. And I have two daughters that are in their mid twenties, and, and they constantly challenge me. I now have a, a straw, metal straw that I can yeah. wash out. I mean, it's simple stuff. If you, if you feel you need a straw, and most people probably don't, but if you do. There's an easy way to get away from things that are disposable. So uh, lots of information out there on the website, uh, and on the internet rather. Uh, I just want to say a couple of things. A big shout out to Real. Um, I know I don't have to tell the people in this room, but they do a phenomenal job. They're absolute leaders in reducing uh, waste. So if you haven't been to the Real Deal store, go out and have a look. Um, I bought a set of bellows. Anyway, there's a lot to find there. <laughs> and uh, so check that out. They, they do great work. Uh, they are the original recycler and, and they keep stuff out of landfills. And we don't have a landfill, so we want to keep as much stuff out as possible. Uh, the, other, the other shout out is, um, you know, uh, buying crude in bulk. That's, you know, that's been happening for a long time. It's getting much more popular. We've heard recently Metro has probably been guilted, but nonetheless, they're gonna start uh, uh, providing things in bulk. You don't have to go to Metro. You can go to Modern Times right here in Smith Falls. Heather does, has been doing that for a long time. It's simple. You can get your almonds, you can get your popular, you can get your honey, you can get whatever you want, and you won't produce any packaging waste whatsoever. So we have that. We have all kinds of services. You can go to the vacuum depot and get your vacuum fixed instead of replacing it for an insane amount of money. Uh, Cobblers can fix your shoes. There's just there's so many things that we can do, and we all have control over that today. So I just want to, uh, and I hope our speakers have encouraged everyone here. And I know most of you probably know this stuff. Our job is to get the rest of society on board with some really easy things. They're small lifestyle changes, and I think through people like yourself, uh, we can do that. So it's an evolution. We're getting better. We have a long way to go. If our goal is zero waste, we have a lot of work to do. But uh, the tools are there, and uh, everyone can, can contribute in your own way. One of the concerning things is, is online shopping. And you know we've all heard of Amazon, and it's great. You can sit in your home and, and, and order a pair of pajamas. If you have it delivered, you can pick it up in your pajamas. So uh, you know, that's maybe a sad statement. But, um, but think of the carbon footprint sending one item mm -hmm. halfway across the country. I mean, we really have to think about that. And I think uh, those people, the millennials of the world and the next group, I forget what they're called, um, are going to, I think, change that narrative. Because that, to me, doesn't make sense. Uh, it's convenient, uh, but, but my goodness, think of the carbon footprint we're leaving behind by doing that. Just a quick little story. I, I uh, the other day um, I broke down and bought a chicken and an egg from Amazon. So I'll let you know how that goes and see which one comes first. <laughs> so with that said, uh, let's go to Q and A. I'm sure you have questions. Perhaps our speakers can come up and we could answer whatever questions you have. And maybe before we do that, sure. can we have all the speakers up here? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, two to. Zero waste. You said you recognize your contribution and that of Malcolm. This is professional. Okay. And we are so glad to have an environmentalist that's TAO in Smith Falls. So perhaps you have to do it. Malcolm mentioned.
function of our real deal is that we want more people to be acquainted with real deal. So our token of appreciation tonight is to each of you a certificate. Oh, thank you. Real deal. <laughs> <laughs> Now before Q and A, yep, sorry, yep. Uh, Peter, you do. And before we get to Q and A, get some refreshments. We start in five minutes. All right, perfect. Sounds good.